At the end of episode number three, you couldn't help but notice I was weighing those pieces. And the idea is I want to see how much heavier they are after the cactus juice process. Now I realize it's not going to be a real good test because there is a certain amount of cactus juice that sort of cakes on the outside and also probably in the hole. So it's not a real uh, true representation of how much it's going to actually weigh more. And also you can't help but see here that I've cut a couple of extra pieces. Well, I'm going to make an extra blank just in case. And the short one, what I plan on doing is cutting it in half and looking at it up close with the microscope and just see how much cactus juice, or rather how well the cactus juice penetrated all the way through. I think you'll be surprised. I think you're going to find that it went all the way through. Now I know that this cactus juice is not corrosive. You might remember I did a test. I put a drop of water and a drop of cactus juice on my cast iron table saw top and the water left a little rusty mark and the cactus juice there was just a little bit of residue and that was it yeah so i don't mind using my sockets here i know that the cactus juice is not going to hurt them probably never use them again anyway now obviously i could put that little tray directly into the vacuum chamber and i've done that many times but i found that if i use an ice cream pail here like this it sort of helps with cleanup later although mind you the little bubbles sometimes when they come to the surface they do kind of splatter and I do have to wipe out the inside of the vacuum chamber anyway. Now this scene actually lasts about five minutes, so I'm going to use time lapse here and speed things up. And you're going to notice that the level of the bubbles goes up and down and up and down. Well, what's happening is I'm bleeding air back into the vacuum chamber. If I don't do that, the uh, bubbles are going to flow over the edge of the little tray. And I might not have enough cactus juice to uh, completely keep the uh, blanks immersed. They have to be kept completely covered at all times from now on until you wrap them with the tin foil. Now I know what most of you are probably thinking. You're thinking, look at all the air still coming out of there. What you have to remember is that those little bubbles that you see under normal room pressure would be so small you'd have to have a microscope to see them. They're expanding tremendously because they're entering into an almost near perfect vacuum. They're actually very, very small. Almost all the air, as far as I can tell, is probably out of those blanks now. And what you see coming out is just sort of like residue. Now you're probably thinking, why don't I just shut the pump off? Well, I could do that, except that I was told by Curtis Seebeck, and he, he's the guy that invented this cactus juice, by the way, that if you shut your pump off while it's still under full vacuum like that, that the life of the pump is shortened. And uh, so you just let the air bleed back into the uh, vacuum chamber, and then when everything sort of neutralizes a bit, then shut the pump off. So he ought to know they probably went through a lot of pumps. Now what I did do was I, I topped the tray up with more cactus juice because the level had gone down a little and uh, I didn't want to accidentally expose the tops of the blanks to air. I'm hoping that this will clear the top of this now. Just barely. Okay, this gauge should go up to 
about 125 pounds because that's what the gauge on the tank says. Well, 120. So it's eight atmos atmospheres. In other words, there's eight times as much pressure on those blanks right now than had I just left them uh, uh, sitting out in the open. Now, when I was turning this thing on the uh, disc sander and, you know, making it round, there's a little spot of glue there. I didn't go quite deep enough right there. I want to get rid of that because right here is the end grain. And if there's glue there, it's going to prevent the cactus juice from getting forced in. So I'm just going to sand that down a little bit. I'm going to be turning this down a lot deeper than that anyway, so it's not going to matter. So I'll just get rid of that right now. Now you'll recall that those little pieces of wood that I just did before, there was a lot of air coming out and a lot of bubbles were coming out of them. And uh, I'm afraid that what's going to happen here is that even though I fill this up and weight it down, the uh, bubbles are going to come up, come out for a long time. So I'm thinking, why don't I put the whole thing in like this and then just, just fill this up so that it, the uh, level is a little bit higher than this. And then when the bubbles come out, the cactus juice will, will just flow back in. It'll keep it full. Um, anyway, I, I think you know what I'm trying to do here. Let's give it a try and see what happens. By the way, what you don't use, you pour back. Okay. Well, here we go.
I think the compressor is probably going to kick in any minute. Probably a slight leak in all this system. I'm going to leave everything the way you see it to soak overnight. And we'll see what we've got in the morning. Well, it's the next morning. And it's snowing again here in Winnipeg. It's a good day to be downstairs in a nice warm workshop. Now 200 degrees Fahrenheit is about as hot as I want to get here, because 212 Fahrenheit is boiling. And if there's any moisture inside there and it boils, it's going to force the cactus juice back out of the wood. At least that's my theory. I could be wrong. Now I am somewhat concerned here. Last night I was thinking, what if the level that's in the little tin, which I guess is down here, it's only about that much above the wood. What if the pressure forces all that liquid into the, into the, into the wood <laughs> and leaves the top of the wood exposed to the air? It's going to be forcing air inside there instead of liquid. That's about the only thing I can think of that maybe went wrong here last night. We'll soon know. Now if I ever do this again in the future, and I probably won't, I'll leave the small tin sitting inside the large container for two or three hours, let the atmospheric pressure, you know, force a little bit in, and then do the high pressure thing. I think I'll stand a better chance. Anyway, it could be that all is well that ends well here. Now even though when I tightened this up I just did it hand tight, sometimes I have to use a wrench to get it started here. The pressure seals the o-ring and sometimes it's just a little bit tight. Now I don't want to accidentally drop this. Maybe I should have made a little hook here instead of a pair of pliers. but. We'll see what happens. And the level didn't go down very much. Now I am really surprised. I thought for sure these would float to the surface. But clearly they've absorbed a lot of the cactus juice. Because they won't float. Okay, let's see if this one will float. Maybe it's stuck on the bottom. No, it won't float either. Well, now isn't that something? How am I going to get it out of there? Well, a couple of hours from now we should know if it worked. Well, that's sure a lot heavier.
Now this cactus juice has only been used once, just like yesterday. So uh, I'm going to keep the old cactus juice, uh, the old cactus juice which I've used several times, separate. Now I don't know if I have to do this or not, but that's what I'm doing. Now here's something else I do that I maybe don't have to do, and that is I keep my cactus juice in the fridge, not the freezer, the fridge. I figure if heat and light shorten its life, cool and dark should lengthen it. That's my theory anyway. Well, an hour and a half has gone by now. I'm looking through the window here, and I see something very interesting has happened. And that is that some of the cactus juices oozed out of this. I'm going to put it back in for a while. Okay, we'll let those cool a bit. Yeah, I hope it's solidified on the inside because it sure isn't on the outside. Now I've had uh, stuff leak before but never this bad. Nor this interesting. I'm wondering if maybe 200 is a little bit too hot. still pretty hot. I think I should have let it cool down. Like it's not burning my fingers but it was quite hot. And I've got to say that's got to be the worst time I've ever had getting the tin foil or the aluminum wrap depending on when you were born off. Yeah but it's still very heavy. I'm going to weigh them. Clean this up first. Now you remember me saying that it wasn't going to be a true representation because there was a certain amount of, you know, the crystallized cactus juice that's on the outside. So uh, we're only really worried about what's on the inside. But anyway, this one was 6.9 grams. Now it's 20.8, so that's like three times as heavy. This one here was seven grams. Now it's 20.7, almost three times as heavy. This little one was 4.8 grams. Now it's 14.4, it's like three times as heavy. And the big one, it was 79.7. Now it's 174.7. So it's like two and a half times as heavy. So even though there's a lot on the outside, there's got to be an awful lot more on the inside. Actually, once we cut this in half and look at it up close, we should be able to see if the cactus juice is right in the center. This is the one that I'm planning to cut right in half. I can't believe it, this episode is 21 minutes long already. I think it's time to call it quits for the day. 